let's do this. <clears throat> All right. Hey, everybody. I am back doing a little bit of X for you. Let's see. Let's just make sure. Alright, well it's working on this browser, so we're calling it a win. Anyway, um, today I'm going to start a new Let's Play run through. Um, in X4, what is sometimes very important is the start that you use for your game. And, uh, Tired of waiting Other the shuttles? The want to fly wherever you want, whenever you want? Then what you need is a pilot's license. And what's the best place to get one? There's That's right, Chase. If you're going to play the game, I recommend going through all three of these tutorials up top. But then each DLC that was introduced gave different starts. So we can see, for instance, Emergence here. The connection that blinds is us guided. is an interstellar connection. Queen's Herald is assisted. So guided is pretty much... Um, like you're you're going through what's effectively a story in the what aftermath of start, the escalating yeah. tensions between the United um, Space Command the game and the common watched my broadcast from last night I had used the project Genesis the mission statement that, of the pioneer initiative was to expand the terms and then there are starts that are the know, great so jump gate shutdown sandbox, completely sandbox, where the game really even after it doesn't really tell you what to do. Now here's an important The jump gate shut down. Regardless of the start you pick, you can do any of the content in the game. You can run the, any of the storylines that have been added through DLCs. It's just a question the of bigger how much syndicate, the game you say. You well, of course I can answer a few questions. So anyway, we're going to we're going to fire up the Terran. Uh, in the aftermath the of the escalating stuff. tensions between the United Ever since I can remember I have dreamt of seeing Earth, humble origin of our species, up close. Since I was born on a trading vessel in the far orbits around Titan, the core of the solar system remains, according to protectorate policy, beyond my reach. That is, until I have made a name for myself. Having recently graduated from cadet school, I aim to do just that. Yeah, so my guy wants to get to Earth, and to do that, his faction will have to be increased with the Terran Protectorate. Try to do this one more time. Oh, look, there's the stream. Yay, that way I can actually watch the, uh... Now there will be a very bossy NPC. Oh, tell me again why we're stuck with maintenance duty in Mars of all places. Yeah, so we've got a wingman uh, who's going to be with us for quite a bit of this. I've, ac I've yeah, actually. Anyone's going to attack our backyard. Yeah. I actually started a playthrough on this back. When I first was picking the game back up, I, I've since deleted it because I had added mods to it that I then wasn't a fan of. 
blah 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 this that the other thing so I've got mostly a fresh a fresh install of that because I also had to nuke the machine at one point that being said I'm actually somewhat familiar with some of this but we'll uh, that would be All right, so the first thing we gotta do we've got to approach this barely adequate satellite. So we'll punch some afterburner to get there. <sighs> this one's fine. Go check that satellite over there. Oh, just head over this way. All right, bossy. So bossy. Automatic afterburner. Seriously? We're already three months out of cadet school, and they still bob us off with housekeeping jobs. We should be out there, with intervention, saving the universe. As you can tell, my wingman is kind of cranky. And let's let's see where we are. If I remember right, yeah, we're in Mars right now. So, the connecting sectors here are the asteroid belt and Venus. And then these right here are accelerators which are, that's how we do faster than light, either jump gates or accelerators, let us jump between the different things. As far as property I own, all I have is the Kukri, which is my, uh, my fighter here. I do want to go in here, go to settings, go to game settings, and then maintain speed in menus, okay, it is on, very good, so the guy should still be smack on him. <laughs> uh, diagnostics are taking a tad long on this one. You go on ahead. I'll catch up with you. Uh, I guess we're supposed to show off our superior maneuvers to these useless tin cans. Feedback forwarded. Typical. I do want to check on something while we're flying around. The game gave me a couple of blueprints to start. Um, I have the blueprint to make Terran energy cells. I have the blueprint for container storage, which is where manufactured goods go. Uh, two docking modules. Some generic uh, connection structures. And then venture modules. I'm not even sure what those are. But I apparently know those as well. So essentially, if I had the money or the resources, I could build a station that can produce energy cells at this point. So that's kind of just, you know, as a little bit of a dig. Get 
damaged, huh? You'll have to get out of your ship and repair it manually. Yep, that satellite's at 20%, so that's fine. I will get up. Okay. And I will go to my transporter and use my space. That's quite enough. Our specialists will take over from here. And you, cadets, will hear from me shortly. Dismissed. Uh, did we break some sort of protocol? Uh, I'm not seeing any reprimands in my profile. Uh, let's find something else to do until Mission Command comes back to haunt us. I'll stick with you. Alright, so I've got a mission listed. Oh, yeah, I get a captain. Sector 
and took out nearby satellites to let the distress signal run aground. And on top of that, Xenon scouts are still drawn to the wreckage days after the incident. <clears throat> Something's brewing. Alright, I'm gonna fly to this midpoint between these stations, because I'm gonna drop a satellite in between them so I have scanned. That way, when I start to set up my economy and whatnot, I'll have a lot of Engaged. Autopilot engaged. I was being a little bit dumb. Autopilot disengaged. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go deploy civilian satellite. And if you see, now I've got uh, green satellite coverage of the wharf and the orbital supply base. So that means that I will see the current status of their bought and sold wares. When your ship, when you originally are in range of them, you'll get you'll get a reading on it. But then if you end up out of range, you'll that information will decay over time. But now I'll have a constant vision on it. And having the wharf in a satellite range is really good because the wharf is is how you um, can buy your own ships. Then we're gonna go over here to this unknown station. Autopilot engaged. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of money, but it's worth... Satellites are one of those things that's worth buying. And you can get satellites if it works too quickly with us. But right now I'm basically... I'm using my, my knowledge of the... Uh... Hey! Ian has joined us. Hey buddy. I don't know when you did the sup. Because my chat's over here on this monitor. Yeah. Anyway, I'm laying the foundation for um, what will become my, my economy once I'm done with the with playing military duty. Okay. So we're gonna once we get to this point, we'll scan and we'll see if there's any other stations or things in range. The reason this is an unknown station with a question mark, because when I did the original long-range scan looking for the freighter over here, that popped. So when you do a long-range scan, uh, jump gates, accelerators, things like that will appear as question marks until you get within range of them. And here we go, medical supply factory. They buy protein-based ice and territories, and they sell medical supplies. Which makes sense, because they're a medical supply factory. So go here, deploy civilian satellite. Autopilot disengaged. Eyes on them. Excellent. Go to long range scan mode. And we'll do a set and do a long range scan. The game sound is drowning me out a little bit. Alright, well, let me do this. Uh. Maybe this will turn it down a little bit. And I'll boost my mic. How's that? That balance a little bit better? Or am I still... Alright, great. Uh, thank you for that live feedback on the audio. That was, uh, that was a concern I had. Well, it's a little bit about me. All right, so we found another station here. 
and another station here. We right now are waiting for new orders, but meanwhile, I'll just fly Auto around pilot. a little bit. Engage. In Mars. We're flying around Mars. There's my fighter. She's pretty. Oh yeah, let's let's fix this. Let's do Modifications? No, that's something else. Uh, faction Empire? Uh, maybe under here. Property owned. Uh, there's a way to there's a way to set skins on things. Skins and. don't remember where. Ah, yeah, and the only factions I know about are the Terrans, that I'm a plus 10 at, and the Xenon, because we've already fought a little bit. I have no inventory. Again, modifications don't do anything. Uh, Autopilot disengaged. Yeah, alright, whatever. I wanna, I wanna change my skins in for all my ships and stuff. But we'll, we'll deal with that. Deploy a satellite here. What is this even? Oh, it's a solar power plant. So this place produces energy cells, and they buy medical supplies. So all right, so they would, they would be, they'd be buying stuff from the medical supply factory, and thus the economy works. X4 Foundations is the base game. That's correct. I have all the current DLC. The playthrough I'm doing right meow is... Uh, oh, I forget what the Terran DLC is called. Um, uh, I'd have to look. I think... I, I think the game... If you buy the game, it comes with a fair amount of the DLC already. I don't remember. The problem is I bought it a long time ago and then wasn't really playing it. You know, imagine that. And then it then I became I'm not gonna say addicted, but I decided, hey, this is pretty cool. So I decided to start playing it. Alright. So this game's not really giving me any guidance on what to do right now which is for a guide at start a little strange i wonder if it's a timer um, let's do this let's start guidance to the wharf mr wolf no not that kind of wharf. autopilot engage and buy a few more satellites never have enough satellites. Shocker. I'm a little bit known for uh, bouncing between games. Although, X4 scratches a similar itch as another game that I need to pick back up shortly, Dwarf Fortress. And I need to pick Dwarf Fortress up again because coming in April is Adventure Mode. But prior to Adventure Mode dropping, I'm going to want to have a world that has a fortress or two in it that I've created. So that I can go and explore my fortresses. Oh, looks like we're still in Mission Command's good books. They just sent us a posting for a border assignment. Oh, that's good. Alright, so we're going to go to the mission offers. Let's see what we got there. Mission mission offers. Defender's Assault. Oh, yeah. So, if you're not doing the Terran start, this mission offer will eventually pop, and this is how you can play this content as a non-Terran Cadet start. Uh, or you can ignore it forever. 
and never do it. Do you have what it takes? Yeah. Are you ready to join the esteemed dregs? And the story is, since I'm a Terran cadet, this is this is obviously important for my own goals. I want to get access to Earth. But for a non-Terran start, you essentially are joining the Terran Protectorate Militia. And the Terran have really good ships. They have some of the best tech in the uh, X universe. So getting your faction up with them does get you access to some really good ships. All right, so I've accepted that mission. And if I look at the mission manager, that's going to be the mission I'm tracking now. Um, yeah, Defender's Assault. Uh, so here's the incoming. I goal. figured you two would jump at this opportunity. Do not disappoint me. She is snippy. Ma'am, understood. All right, but before we wharf. before we do this, we're going to dock at this wharf. Docking granted. And like I said, we want to grab some more satellites. So, Ian, you're, you were asking me if this is, like, elite. This part of the game is the most elite-like aspect when you're flying one of your ships around as an individual and not really looking at the map saying, ooh, what do I want to build here? Or how do I want to assign my miners or traders? This is, in fact, <laughs> we're about to come up to the docking mini game, which the Kukri might have a better docking computer, but... Yeah, if you're familiar with Elite, this this has a similar feel to it. You got to get your ship lined up properly. And now there is not a timer running where they're going to blow you up if you don't dock in time, which apparently does happen in Elite Dangerous. Uh, here we go, and here we go, and now we want to go down. We need to point the nose, and now we need to go down. Now we need to go down. Yep, here we go. And now I'm docking. Successfully docked. Yay. All right, I got my 40,000 credits. To welcome you aboard. So here's the ship I'm flying right now. And, oh, maybe this is where I can modify the... The, uh... Okay, well, here's my consumable. So I'm going to buy some more satellites. I'm going to get, okay, that'll spend 31,000 of my credits. That might seem like a lot, but it's worth doing. Uh, I currently don't have the good docking software. That's fine. I'll dock manually. I don't really care. Um, were there any other consumables I wanted? No, nah, I'm good. All right, so I'll add this to my shopping list, confirm the order. And then they'll, it'll take them like five seconds to load my new satellites in. Yay! And then if I wanted to, again, this is just to kind of show the game a little bit. You can get up, and I can just, I can climb off of my ship. Like, there's the ladder right there. And I can run around the station. Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, in fact, this terminal here in front of my ship might be where I can set the skin. Yeah, here we go. Display ship options. Uh, let's go redesign. Um, paint modifications. Here we are. And I guess I don't have any modifications yet. Maybe I gotta earn them with my uh, with my pilot. Interesting. Interesting. Because I want to have the bear playing the guitar as my decal. Yeah. Elite's one of those games I wanted to love. And it's it can be breathtaking in VR. But it gets really, really boring. I mean, if you love just... If you love okay. traveling from system to system... Like, the space combat's really good, I think. Um... The, the trade the trade system is good but since like what what x4 has that elite doesn't is the ability for you to build your own empire and have like a huge fleet of your own ships eventually all right 
So we need to. So they want us to go to the asteroid belt. Let me let me check my satellite coverage here. All right, we're good. So when you've got a mission selected, the yellow shows what's going to happen. Um, and so Auto I'll start the autopilot up. We will be scanning your inventory. You can scan my inventory all you want. I don't have anything illegal on me. <laughs> But Elite's a classic, man. I remember playing Elite on 8-bit computers back in the 80s. And I think it was originally on a British microcomputer. Shout out to your countrymen there. But the, uh, yeah, the wireframe version of Elite on the... I think I played the wireframe version of it on the Apple II. I hope I'm not misremembering that. It was either on the Apple II or, or the early IBM PC clones. Yes, BBC microcomputer. Crazy. And just because it it was vaguely, it was procedural, like it was a procedural game in the sense that, yeah, it was a, it was a pre-built universe and stuff, but the way they handled the data in the game, and it, basically it's amazing the size of the universe they, that they were able to squeeze into a small computer at the time. Or I guess what was a large computer at the time, which would be a tiny computer today. One consistent thing about Elite that always got everybody's goat was the docking game. Terran security to Talati vessel, you are approaching Terran restricted space. Please divert your course. This is Talati Trader Lucrative Investments to Terran Patrol. A little bit of a cut. We are looking for mutual opportunities to make profits. We are not interested. We insist that you divert your course. But we can surely achieve mutual benefit from. Negative. We demand that you change course immediately. Maybe we can persuade you with valuable information about. We order you to change your course immediately, or we will be obliged to take measures to protect the safety and security of this system. Okay, okay. Changing course. The unrealized profits from this unfortunate loss of opportunity are split equally between each of us. Yeah. So the Talati. In my other save, the Talati are the race that I have the most faction with because I've done a lot of trading in their area. They are they are um, really into. They're basically like your 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 capitalists, your space merchants and whatnot. The Terrans feel all guilty about unleashing the Xenon on the rest of the universe, but they also are super protective of their own territory, so they really don't want anybody coming in and messing things up so they're very isolationists or they're they're, they're they're isolationists all right what what what's just pinned on here is that discord yeah so that got uh that gave us a little bit of an overview like some flavor there of some of the things going on in the universe Ian sending me messages. All right, so now I got messages in my intergalactic Gmail. Terran, war against the Xenon, the community of planets, irresponsible action the community of Xenon is once again the universe that soul could only be safer if the Terran protector takes a protective stance. Ah, uh, we request that. All right. Yeah, so again, the Terrans, they're, we're like very, very Auto not pilot. not really Engaged. joining the rest of the, the universe and, and working together at this point. In this game, there's the uh, there's the idea of Commonwealth Space, which is the big in the original uh, launch version of the game, that was pretty much Commonwealth Space, which is the different races, including the um, Argons. The Argons are originally, they're humans that were cut off from the soul system when the jump gates got all shut down. 
And again, in the lore, the jump gates connecting all the systems just suddenly stopped working at one point. And uh, apparently, and I might be getting this not 100% accurate, they've been coming back online over time. Uh, so there are humans in Commonwealth space, but they are not considered native Terrans at this point. <laughs> So you've always been able to play a human in the game, but the um, the one the ex there was an expansion that added basically our solar system. Now this is this is apparently a very good start if you don't want to find yourself in the middle of a lot of the craziness of what can happen in Commonwealth space. For example. Um, one sector over now in my other save there's a xenon destroyer and xenon destroyers are bad news there's a xenon destroyer that's terror terrorizing civilian traffic it's considered a capital ship there's there's four sizes of ship small medium large and extra large so the destroyer is a large ship so this is the whole Solborn militia business that's been all over the news some say it's because of increased xenon activity. Others that it's some sort of uh, publicity stunt. Or even a political power play against the intervention corps. Uh, well, I'm not one to complain. Not this time, anyway. <laughs> Whatever gets us in high you, command. You complain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get stuck in something? Militia, squadrons, and foreign auxiliary. Those of you who were not lucky enough to be born on Game's Terran a little soil, sometimes. let me hereby welcome you formally into the ranks of the first and last defenders of the gate network. And to those who are Sol born, or even Earth born, to resist the temptation of heroism and put the defense of our sanctuary first is a sign of providence and true courage. By coming here, you have already made Earth proud. Captain. The ball is in your court. Much obliged. This is Captain Nowak Lee of the Military Supply Transport, Silverback. Another welcome from me and my crew, and glad to see the militia is keeping its promises. All squadrons, prepare for liftoff. Right, so as I was saying, um, Xenon Destroyer, it's a uh, capital ship. It's, it's a large ship. My best ship, the Rasanante, is a medium gunboat. Now, it's a Terran gunboat, which means it's good. But, you know, that's... It would not be a good idea to go toe-to-toe one-on-one. I've been building some fighters to go along with it. But, at some point, if I want to... If I want to, like, take out this destroyer... Uh, I'm going to have to probably build a couple of more gunboats. And the thing is, I don't necessarily have to take the destroyer out. There's no mission, there's no quest telling me to destroy it. But what it is doing is it's, it is disrupting the local economy by killing shit. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Now this is a fascinating effect, by the way. When you get, when your ship is close enough to a capital ship, it actually got sucked into the capital ship's zone of influence or whatever, and gets to essentially ride along with it. So that's what I'm doing with Silver. I'm close enough to it that my ship will go where it goes. And you can see my frame rate's kind of janky. That's not because my computer's not good, that's just X is a little janky sometimes. Basically, I think what we're going to end up doing is going through that jump gate. I don't remember from the story. Jump gate to the unknown sector. But meanwhile, the silverback is just kind of like, yeah, I'm silverbacking around. I'm 
it's that ship on the horizon. We look on the map, there's probably going to be a lot of ships here. Yeah. A lot of ships. And it does look like the Silverback is probably going to eventually hit that jump gate. through the jump gate. Yep. Entering system. Get so Yeah, here we are. Here's the Xenon. So, you see the little white bar? That's the hull. If you had any shields, there'd be a little blue bar. Top of it. But he didn't have shields. That guy, this guy have locked onto, he's got blue shielding. Yeah, okay. I don't care about the items I really know about them. And then in my HUD, you can see my shields are the blue. Okay. The little X means I'm out of range of my weapon. Now that's a little circle, that's for tracking. To, like, to try and help me leave with my gunnery. That's when I should fire. Yeah, maybe I'll pick these things up. Yeah, I'm gonna work on fighting the Xeon, the Xeon first. But when you kill enemies, they sometimes drop these crates that can be valuable. And you can use them, you can sell the items, you can craft with them. That's pretty cool. You guys are busy fighting Xenon. I'm gonna go here and try to pick up the space jump. Yep, see? Picked it up. Woohoo! We'll go and fight this guy now. Because uh, the shields have taken a little bit of damage. And the NPCs, what I what I will say is the NPCs do a pretty good job of fighting. If I wanted to, I could play Giant Coward and let them do most of the heavy lifting. But, you know, what fun would that be? So what we ended up doing, just to, to review, is we jumped to another sector. So we're now not in the solar system. We are now in the sector Getsu Fune. This red stuff, this red indicates... Um, minerals so it's a it's a it's a place where we could do some mining there's mining in the solar system too but that's just you know to, to show you what's what here this is your captain speaking on behalf of the crew of the silverback i would like to thank you for your continued support during these turbulent episodes we should be able to manage the last leg of our route without further interruptions Ah, so the silverback is <laughs> going away. Let's see what mission command has in store for us next, huh? So that's been successful. All right, so I need to go to the military outpost now. Before I do that, let me just see where I am here. I'm going to drop a resource probe. That giant green circle, you'll see, that's actually much bigger than. A than the satellites I've been dropping. This shows that there's ice, ore, silicon, and raw scrap 
within its scanning range. And the scrap is from the destroyed ships. But the, um, the ice, the ore, and the silicon are three resources that mining ships can, can collect. And one, they actually will respawn over time if you, if you mine the crap out of them. So now I, now I know where Auto I can send the miner to collect some stuff. See, I'm trying, I'm trying to lay a little bit of foundation. And what I might do is once I've earned enough money, I'll probably buy a small miner and just have them auto mine ore. And auto mine, what they'll do is they'll mine ore until they're full and then they will try to find a place to sell it. And they'll just keep doing that over and over again. And I make money. Yay! Although I might have them do it in the asteroid belt because that's probably safer. The snooty soulborn military outpost. Oh, now would you look at that station? I am looking oh, at that we're station. We're really planning our plague, aren't we? Wonder what the rest of the network has to say about that. Anyway, following protocol, I'm guessing that the next logical step is. Ugh, mines. Ugh, of course, can't have a military outpost without a minefield, eh? I just hope they give us the ones with proper friend foe detection. My buddy complains a lot. Uh, I see they're still ejecting the same old multi-purpose lockboxes in the hopes that someone will pick them up eventually. It's a miracle they didn't drift away. Hijacked by Newton's vengeful spirit. See if you can spot them with your long-range scan. There we go. And looks like there's a hostile. This is a... I think it's probably a criminal. Maintenance vessel. Defense platform. Oh. Did the... Yeah, the defense platform. You can you can kill criminals to get a little bit of faction and money, but it looks like the, uh, the, the uh, station did it already. Alright, so these guys here are lockboxes. They are, you'll often find these in space, and you can you need to shoot the locks open to get the goodness inside. And this can be a little tricky. But yeah, you gotta be able, you, you gotta take advantage of the Newtonian physics of controlling your ship. So, as it's spinning, we'll see the lock is kind of in the middle there. Got it! God, armored! <laughs> That's smart. Friend phone mines, all right. Once you've collected enough of them, we should move on to the deployment zone. All right, so I've got to collect a few more. Didn't quite get the lock that time. This is a goofy little mini game, basically, of shoot the lock open by trying to position your ship properly around it. I generally don't bother with this in my other game at this point because I'm just making. And I just buy the shit I want at this point. At least anything that would be in a locker box. Oh, come on. <sighs> Demonstrate that you're bad at video games without saying it out loud. Why is it? Okay, so those little white dots were the lasers. There we go. Alright, I got the mines I need. These are the mines I'm looking for. Target area is over there, so we'll go to autopilot. Engage. Seems a bit dangerous placing them so close to the outpost. Uh, but who are we to judge? Who are we indeed to judge? So I'll go to deploy military, front phone line. Autopilot, disengage. I just gotta like dump them in this circle area that I'm in anywhere. I could probably just dump five of them in a row without moving, but I like to move a little bit because that seems like what I would do if this were real. Stupid role player.
Let's see how our fellow defenders have handled their part of the assignment. Oh boy. Anyway, that's our task list almost done. Just one standard patrol left. <laughs> Those are easy. You just circle around the station for a few minutes and tell them that everything's clear. Yep, we can do that. I don't remember if we get attacked here at this point. Probably knowing this game. Encrypted connection established. What's up, Nelly? What is up indeed, Cadet? There appears to be a nav beacon suspiciously close to our outpost. A nav beacon with no apparent owner and purpose. Investigate, so but keep quiet about it. Yeah, I think the game, the graphic, again, the biggest graphical issue that I have with the game is sometimes the frame rate gets really jaggy, but it looks pretty, especially considering what they're trying to accomplish. Like, the game is very ambitious. And what I will say is it's been as stable as a rock. And I'm running it on Linux, by the way. Yep. It's a Yaki beacon. Be the insecti. Be the insecti. Who on earth is Yaki? Huh? Hmm? Never heard of that guy. Strange. I could have sworn there was some sort of signal at first. I'm afraid we will have to postpone your secret mission. Our scanners have picked up an approaching Xenon vessel. Saddle up and join the defenses. Nav beacon, maintenance vessel. Oh. That's a criminal. So we're gonna... Took him out. There's the Xenon. Now, if I stay close to the station, the turrets will help. Wait, that's a scout! We have to take it out before it... Uh, it's gone. All squadrons, prepare to launch. We have an incoming Xenon strike force. Engage when ready. Mission command signing off. Yeah, now this this is By one of those. Sun. What could be more important than this? Thank you. Oh, and that was the guy thanking me for killing the criminal. And I got 500 credits for that. And a little bit of faction. So we're gonna let the Xenon approach. Which will draw them into the station's guns. Yeah, do I want that Nvidium? Yeah, why not? Although it's cheap. Go and help. You're in for it. Actually, it looks like our pilots are doing a pretty good job. To get to the all right. Export theme music. Now, because I, I used my afterburners, my shields are depleted. So, it would be good if they would recharge now. There they care about vacuum robots. Alright, I got a 
much closer to right. Oh, that's right. They, this guy's not happy that we're in the sector. And everyone will see you as the oppressors you really are. Chick Show, that bumbling buffoon is about to waltz right into our minefield. Any squads in the vicinity? Yes, ma'am. That's a relief. Quickly. Slow down that ship without injuring its crew. We cannot have another diplomatic meltdown this soon. And get me the chief secretary on the line pronto. All right. Uh, you, you heard the commander. I'll follow your lead. Oh, this isn't gonna be pretty. But you're pretty. All right, I'm gonna hit a quick save. So we've got this uh this miner coming in here <laughs> who doesn't like that the Terrans have built a station here he's clearly a little spicy about it um and we need to basically stop him and the way we're going to do that I've done this before so I, you know, spoiler alert we're going to take out his engines this actually demonstrates one of the tutorials talks about this, but on bigger ships you can target individual components like turrets and engines. Sorry, young fella. Oh, I get it. Destroying those engines might slow them down. Oh, let's be careful to stay out of the turret's line of sight, though, huh? I know it! Terran scum! Shut up! We're saving you from yourselves! So I took a one engine out, and as you can see, I've taken some hull damage, so that's not great. But I can deal with that, and I'll show you how I can deal with that after I finish this. We're taking hits. And my shields are back up, so that's good. Uh, I'm fighting the bug. It's been, I'm actually feeling better than I did yesterday. Job well done, squad. Let me be absolutely clear in case that trespasser's speech got to you. You are not troublemakers. You are problem solvers. Yeah, problem Our solver. neighbors might not see it that way, but the network depends on people like you. People like us, who won't hesitate to do what's necessary. Now I need you two on standby while I sort out this diplomatic mess. Okay. Oh, a situation like that can keep Kraken not as tough as Mission Command. Uh, at least it seems like we did well in her eyes this time. 
let's go into travel mode so that we're out of this guy's range. Be a good opportunity to buy a few upgrades for our ships. <laughs> I've taken the liberty of marking the nearest station for you. If yeah. you think you're already set, just let me know. Yeah. Auto -pilot so we're at autopilot and back to Saul. <clears throat> yeah, there's been stuff going around for sure. Working mostly remote has helped a lot, but yeah, it sometimes is inevitable. <laughs> the cooties are going to show up. I wonder if he's taking me to Mars. Autopilot. Okay, everyone, listen up. We've got reports of increased xenon activity in Savage Spur 2. As everyone is aware, this is the primary xenon entry point into the region, and it's our duty to handle this situation. Our mission is to initiate a precision strike in order to divert their attention from our movements in Getsufun. Stay sharp. What the hell's going on here? Did I trigger something else? Terran versus Xenon. What is this? We're, yeah, we're going to upgrade the ships anyways. anyways. Engage. And then we'll go and do the other mission. And right now I've got paid, so I'm sitting on 133,000 credits, which is nice. Entering system. Sol. Oh, we're going to Jupiter, huh? Oh, excuse me. How rude. Drop a resource probe in the cloud right here. Look at all those sweet, sweet resources. The asteroid belt. It could be a belt that yacht. <coughs> uh, I have Jupiter. run it on the deck. It some of the controls are irritating if you are handheld. So I prefer to do the dock. I prefer to run it from my desktop machine, but it absolutely will run on the deck. Okay, we're Auto actually going to turn the autopilot off for a second and stop moving. Okay, I'm going to get up. And then we're okay. going to get into my spacesuit. Why am I doing that? Well, because my ship took some damage when we were saving that miner from himself. So if I select my ship by clicking on it, there's the mouse pointer. There it is. You'll see my hull is at 59%. So I've got my repair laser selected in my spacesuit. That's the little wrench right here. So now I just hold in the trigger with the green beam, and my hull will start to be repaired. Now I could spend money at the space station to have them fix it, but why would I do that? When I can just basically fix the ship myself. Taking a nice little space walk. And yeah, you don't actually have to move the laser beam around. You can just point it at the ship at one point, it'll eventually fix it. Is it the most realistic thing? No, but it's kind of cool. Now, small ships, you either have to spend money to get them repaired or repair them yourself with a repair beam. Medium ships, the service crew will repair the ship over time. And then 
large and extra large ships, I'm not sure how that works. Although there are there are ships you can buy to service other ships out in the field. So, yeah, if you if you've got like a carrier or something, you're probably going to be carrying around a maintenance vessel with you that can that can fix the carrier when you're out in well sea, space, whatever. All right. So the fighter's now back at 100%, which is excellent. Docking granted. So we'll climb back in. And we'll turn the autopilot back on and fly the station. So now I am now repaired from my misadventures with the mining ship. Yeah, the Xenon couldn't scratch me, but the mining ship took a chunk out of my hull. Go figure. Buddies is playing Room World. That's a great game, too. So many good games nowadays. Oh, okay, it's, a, it's an equipment dock. So this doesn't actually... Equipment docks don't necessarily build ships, but they're places where you can repair, upgrade, and restock certain things. So what we're going to do is, while we're here... We're, of course, going to drop a satellite. Because that's what I do. Autopilot disengaged. Requesting permission to dock. Docking permission granted. And yeah, let's do that. Docking granted. Where's the docking bay? If I had a pilot, the pilot could handle this part captain they can handle this part but I guess I'm supposed to fly the ship myself I'll, hi I'll hire a captain soon enough oh, keeping up with those xenon was tough huh so I recommend bumping your engines up a tier and you can never go wrong with better weapons either don't forget to stock up on deployables satellites nav beacons mines and yeah, th thanks for the advice on, you know, spending my money. But I appreciate it. And again, you got to remember, this this is a start specifically, like, to try and guide players. So it's actually, there are actually some pretty good tips. I, I think it's a, a great start. Because it really does, you, you get to do quite a few of the activities in the game. And you end up... Oh, there's a gunboat, like the Rossi. You end up um, in a situation where if you want to stay in a safe area to build your economy, you can do that in the in the ter in ter uh, terror protectorate space. You're in trouble now. I'm not afraid now, of you. there is a mission you can take where you're going to go undercover and you end up teleported into Commonwealth space. I might hold off on that for a little bit. Until I have have set myself up in Terran space a little. Really what I should do is I should upgrade the dock so I don't have to deal with this bullshit. I think I'm not updating the dock in somewhere. Successfully. Let's see what this is gonna cost me. I have We're satellites. We're pleased to welcome you aboard. Yeah, we're good. Here we go. What is going on here? She was very sluggish for a moment. All right, so the engines I've got right now, right meow, sorry, are all around Mark 1s. I think maybe... I think we're going to go with the all around Mark 2. And then, because I'm getting tired of having to do work docking, we're going to upgrade my docking computer. Yeah, I'm tired of doing work docking. Requesting permission to dock. And then we're docking going to grab... 
dog. doesn't appear it doesn't appear that I can grab a pilot maybe I can grab a service crew and promote him to pilot yeah all right so we'll confirm my order that'll take 40 seconds or so oh god yeah the, the docking mini game is amusing for a little bit but it gets old really fast. Now what I'm going to do now is while they're installing the stuff on my ship, I'm going to run in the station and find the trader. Because what I suspect is going to happen is the crew person I've hired is probably either not going to know how to fly a ship at all or is going to be terrible at it. Why is this thing so hanky-janky? So I want to buy some seminars to train him in pilot. Can I help? Gemma looks like she's here. You go. Seen things. All right, here we go. So basic seminar. So we want a basic piloting seminar, and then we want a seminar for the one star crew, because the basic seminar will take him to one star, and then the other one will make it better. Good luck out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go back to the Kukri. That's the class. I could actually re I could name the ship something better than Kukri. But, all right. So let's, let's do this. Let's go to... Please on. We will be scanning your cargo home. Yeah. Let's go to no, personnel to management. That's fun. You can go now. And we're going to make him... We're going to promote him to pilot. And then we're going to open up communications with him. See, there he is sitting down thinking he knows what he's doing. But you don't know what you're doing. So let's te teach you first how to be a pilot, and then teach you how to be a better pilot. And now... Goodbye. Now, he's almost a two-star pilot and can fly the ship for me when I feel like being Ubered around rather than uh, flying it myself. So that's kind of cool. I find having... Uh, having... A pilot on each of your ships is a good thing. And in fact, when you order a ship from scratch from a shipyard, you don't have a choice. You have to you have to get a captain. Speaking of, I just want to budget this out. So let's find that wharf. Mr. Wolf! Let's find that wharf. And let's say buy ships. So we're gonna go small. And we're gonna say hey, what if I want a mining ship? How much is that going to cost me? So the basic miner is 151. Let's stock it up. Actually, let's do select loadout. Minimum preset. Really, the thing's going to insist on combat engines? That seems a little... That seems a little crazy. Yeah, let's let's go a little cheaper than that. Uh, we're gonna go with a mining drill. You don't need the docking computer because I'm never driving it. Do some uh, some resource probes. Get a pilot service crew. Alright, so for me to get a small miner with service crew is 324696. So we're going to save that loadout and we're going to go crude with drill. 
So that's my goal to make that much money to buy one of these got one of these miners so that I can start making passive income by mining asteroids. Because otherwise the only way to make money is to collect things myself and sell them. All set? Or run then missions. Let's pay the outpost another visit and see what mission command has in store for us. Although running missions isn't the worst. Some people think it's the worst. Alright, so let's go switch on the autopilot. Engaged. And let's see, so we've got 43, so yeah, we need about 300,000 credits. Which sounds like a lot, but it actually isn't that bad. Especially there's ways to... What is this? Wartime economics. Hey there, pilot. The solar mint a few things strike me as odd. Why would intervention allow them to be reserved? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Thank you, co-pilot, for being Captain Oscar. Thank you, Wingman, for being Captain Oscar. All right, so my ship has better engines. I've got a, I've got a captain. I've got a plan for a miner. I've got some resources plotted out where they my miner can make some money. Money. The only thing I really probably need to do is find places that buy ore. But that's that's a major problem. Yes, you can you can take the ship, put all the pieces you want onto it, save the loadout, and then buy as many of them as you want later on. It, it's really good that way. You can also basically you can dry dock a ship Entering and upgrade belt. the individual components on it. Like over time, you'll eventually earn enough favor to buy the better gear from a faction, so you can refit ships so that they're well, they end up better, and you can save those loadouts as well. Some people play this game as a real-time 4X game where they play completely from the galactic map and just move their fleets around like chess pieces on the board. They don't bother getting into the pilot Entering seats. system. Get so or even getting onto the ships anymore. What I've been showing in this playthrough so far is more of the first person first or I guess in the sp spaceship is it first person I don't know but the real well the tactical stuff because you do a lot of the tactical play in the beginning of the start and there's some tactical stuff you haven't seen yet like uh, uh, data vaults which are uh, like well, then, a little a place you can As go a and, and grab things let me paint you a bigger picture yeah, you can paint my command picture. may not like it but if we continue to face the Xenon head-on, scouring the network with imposing fleets, heroically putting out fires wherever they flare up, we are bound to lose this war. Do not misunderstand. The Intervention Corps is indispensable, both as long arm of the Protectorate and winged savior alike. However, I'm a winged savior. this eternal meat grinder of clashing fleets cannot be a permanent solution. It does to truly not beat the Xenon uh, in the war of attrition, it is paramount I don't that we instead play, thwart their infrastructure I don't, wherever possible. I don't know if people have played Those in VR. Are it does not natively support sectors. VR. But Avoiding I think people have talked about playing it in VR resources. in like big screen I'm putting theater you on mode. Scouting duty. Report any sightings of Xenon infrastructure units directly to me. That would be tight if it's yeah, she natively does have supported a very good VR. Point. Which gives me an idea. See, the Xenon might appear as an unstoppable and unknowable force at first glance, but the way they wage war isn't so different from us. Like us, they rely on their scouts to gauge their enemy's strength and send an appropriate force to deal with them. But unlike us, they're simple-minded machines. It's all action-reaction. So, if we attack a scout somewhere in... 
no man's space. We can divert their forces, potentially leaving their infrastructure units unprotected. Apologies. I just happen to be still listening in. You may go ahead with your plan, but be warned. The Xenon are not just simple machines. They're erratic, You're a simple machine. unpredictable, deadly. Stay alert at all times. Yes, ma'am. I picked out a nice spot for our operation. Not too far from the outpost, but still close enough to the Xenon-infested outskirts of the sector. A satellite might serve as bait and help us spot incoming scouts in the distance. Hey, so Kurz, I appreciate you stopping by. How's the, um... Uh, how's the, um... Um, ARC server experiment coming along? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. So, yeah, this, this here is a little bit of a scripted mission type thing. We're going to drop a satellite. I'm going to do a quick save at some point because I sometimes get blown up shortly. And I want to be able to, to restore from save if that happens. You've already seen how fast these things are. As soon as one appears, try to shoot it out of travel drive. That's going to be tough. There! Yeah, it didn't work. But it doesn't matter. It's still going to trigger the mission. Oh, is he coming back around? Because he's mad at us? You mad, bro? Ah, bastard! <laughs> I really hope it's still reported us as a threat. Oh, can't save it. Oh, here they come. Not a second too soon. Let's I'm going to travel mode this way to, to dodge the Xenon react. patrol. Oh, these fools don't even realize they're pointing us right at our target. So there should be a Xenon patrol that whips by us, and if I dodge them, I won't die. Oh, okay. Wife asking me to help her, that sounds like a load of bullshit if I've ever heard one. Switch to autopilot. Autopilot. Engage. Go to where the infrastructure to where the infrastructure units are. I think we dodged the combat units, which is good. Because that could have gotten ugly. S. And we'll drop out of travel. Disengage. Carrots on the top, so the idea is you want to get below them if possible. Of course, it's not happening. Shot terrible. Can't 
overheat if I'm not careful. So I should probably not just smash the trigger when I'm not hoping it happen. This guy should be just about dead. Yeah, he's blowed up. And then this guy. This asshole! Let's get him. You can play No Man's Sky whenever you want. In fact, there's um, they they're running and they're running an abbreviated expedition that'll get you that golden ship. It's actually easier to complete than it was when it was live the first time, which only have six days to do it. I fired it up this morning, and I I have every intention of trying to do it, but we'll see how that we'll see what happens there. Cardiographers is the expedition. So Nate did that one. He's always like, oh look, it's my golden ship. I'll show him. I'm gonna have a golden ship too. I've got a golden ticket. And dead Xenon. Ha, perfect. Now, let's return to the outpost and wait! Is that another one of those map beacons? Nelly! Unknown signal source triangulated. It's that same signal as before. You're not getting away this time. Alright, so what do we have here? Empty space. Let me hit save again. Because I forget exactly how things go. All right, go shopping. You enjoy that. Can't can't imagine it'll be pleasant today. <coughs> Autopilot. And I am enjoying Engaged. space a lot. I just I can't believe I slept on this game as long as I did. Like I believe I should double check when I bought it. I just remember opening it the first time, dorking with it a little bit, and being like, I don't know what's going on at all here. And I've owned it. I probably bought it before the game happened. To give you some idea. Autopilot. Disengage. Strange beacon. That wasn't much good, was it? <laughs> Another one. I knew something was brewing. Come on, we're about to bust this mystery wide open. You may live to regret that. Would you like some more? I'm saving it one more time because shit can go. I do remember shit can go crazy wrong once I pop through this gate. Xenon keep popping out of this gate. And that's what happens. Like, there are certain sectors that generate Xenon, and then they start coming into adjacent Looks sectors, like and if they're not dealt with, things can go horribly wrong. Like, that Xenon Destroyer that's hanging out in my other save. you 
jump out of here or I'm gonna get killed. Yeah, your wingman essentially gets abducted. It can be a case of if it's red, shoot it. But sometimes the red things are really deadly. So sometimes if it's red, you should run away. And the game... Well, okay. Your character does not have, like experience right like if you're flying around first person just in control of your ship and you're just blowing things up you're not actually developing your character in game at all like yeah maybe you're collecting loot whatever things like that but there's like no reason to just meaninglessly grind on enemies in the game to like make your character ding you're your personnel that your npcs that are running your ships and stuff yeah, as they do stuff, they'll get better. So there's there's a certain aspect where having them grind on enemies is not a bad thing. But um, just because something's red, you really need to consider, is it useful engaging this thing? You know, what will do it, what what will it do for must. me? Use the station as cover. Draw them into our turret's line of fire. No matter what's coming at us, we will not budge. Autopilot. Disengage. The autopilot. But yeah, if it's red, it's if it's red, it means that it doesn't like you. And you can take an attitude or shoot it. But again, sometimes it could be sometimes you won't want to engage certain enemies because the game doesn't necessarily care about a fair fight. Because of the sandbox nature of it. You could be in a situation where you're totally outclassed and outgunned. And there's no guardrails to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Like there's, no, there's no concept of level scaling or anything like that, for instance. You can be, you can be dumb and get, get engaged in a, in a fight that you have no chance of winning the game stop you from doing it. Alright, so this mission here we need to hold off for seven minutes. Which is not that big of a deal. And my ship, of course, took a real beating when I was on the other side of the jump point. So I'm going to want to repair it once this is over. <coughs> Rather more z Look at all the red on the radar. Oh my god. And if you're used to Elite, the game has taken a lot of inspiration from Elite. The radar works the exact same way. Representing three-dimensional space and two dimensions and stuff, you know, wh where it is relative to that plane. And the little sticks making it 3D. You know where it's at. Same idea. Yeah, I'm being a dumbass and I'm flying right towards the Xenon. But I could just let them come to me. Let's see, it looks 
like there's some cargo that's been dropped in various places. Like, is there anything particularly expensive that I might be able to turn into a miner? I'm trying to get a lock on some of the stuff. Here we go. Alright, let's see here. What do we have? Here we've got... Container. Oh, that's... That's pretty cool. I'll take that. I'll buy that for a dollar. And the O key sucks things up. It's like a little tractor key. It's a way to collect some stuff. So some of these items I'm collecting might help me with my uh, with my budget to get my miner. There's a few of them. That can be really actually really good. So we'll say. One per Yeah. One valid There's a perfectly valid uh, strategy of find where there's a big space battle going on, collect all the drops, and then sell the drops for money. Like Tenardier from Les Miserables, going through the pockets of the English dead. Some folk think it's a little cheesy, and it's not something I've spent a whole lot of time doing, but it, it, it's, it is a valid idea. And then one of the expansions, they added the ability to process scrap for money, where you can take destroyed ships, the husks of destroyed ships, turn them into salvageable scrap, and then, you know, sell that. Yeah, it's the best time to go through their pockets, that's right, once they're no longer with us. Then, of course, there's Miracle Max. If this doesn't work... There's one other thing you can do. What's that? Go through their pockets for loose change. I think I got the quote wrong, but that was the spirit of the quote. Did we drive the Xenon away and I'm just waiting for the timer to count down? It's possible we exhausted their force. All right, while we're waiting, let's take a look and see what I picked up. And did I get some good stuff or is it garbage? All right, so that's illegal. That's illegal. Hmm. Yeah, but... Yeah, I did grab some things that are that are worth some money. It's a shame that it could be tough to find where to sell these. <sighs> there is a black market, but not I, I'm not 100% sure how to get to it successfully. I guess I could use the Google, huh? That's right. Good old Carol Kane. I'm not a bitch, I'm your wife! But after that, I don't know if I want to be that anymore! mission might actually pay out. Yeah, so this is gonna... This is actually gonna pay out a decent amount of money once I'm done. So that's cool. 
So I will be on my way to buy a buyer. So that's good. Alright, 25 seconds. A lot of people playing Valheim today. Valheim and fine Viking. Do I have a satellite here yet for this station? Congratulations, squad. You handled yourselves admirably. Even though this was considerably more than you initially signed up for, That's a resource I'll be bro. contacting you. Individually to discuss our next steps once the we'll dust has settled. Here. Until then, you will want to take some time off. Consider this an order. Except for you, recruit. I'm adding you to the admission list to Maya headquarters. We have a few things to talk about. You scare me a little bit, mission command. Alright, so I've been paid, so that's good. And now I'm gonna fly to so autopilot engaged to mission command all right what am i doing with my factions all right so the one of the problems with uh, starting as the Terrans is that some people don't y your faction relationships don't start off great so it can be difficult to raise it, it, it takes it could take some time to raise the, the other folks entering yeah. system so again there's there's a lot of benefits in, in this start it's a very safe area of space they have good technology and stuff, so there's got to be some disadvantages. Is this an accelerator, or what is this? Where am I actually going? Okay, it's gonna have me jump through an accelerator. So she's back at, yeah. So her headquarters is back in Mars, or the Mars sector. That's fine. This is fine. Dog sips coffee now. Entering Mars. And get ready for some creepy character animations because she's downright creepy. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it right out loud right now. The character models in the games are sometimes in the game are sometimes not good. <laughs> like the game does a lot of things good, but some of the voice work is clearly using bad voice synthesis, and some of the models are rather sketch for the characters, especially the humans. Like the aliens are sometimes a little more tolerable because, you know, they're aliens, right? So, but the, the humans jump sometimes gate. are a little that. You see that jump gate's blown up. Not fun. Orbital supply base. So I'm 
going to get up here. Autopilot. Disengage. And I'm going to have... Because I'm feeling lazy. I'm going to go... Hello there. And say, hey. I want you to dock for me. Because I don't feel like it. Okay. Can I help? He'll dock, and then I can go to talk dock. to the crew, to the crazy command lady. Granted. And he should be good enough pilot that the docking works out okay, because I'm trained in that. Calvin Collins. Thank you, Captain Calvin. Ah, such janky frame rate. Ah. Oh, and I sometimes forget that the stick is inverted for flight, but not for when I'm in first person. So I sometimes mean to move my head up and then I move it down, because again, I, it's, I should probably just invert the stick for both. Alright, thank you, Captain. I need to go talk to the creepy NPC. Hello, creepy NPC. Who looks like she needs some chiropractic work. Oh, God. I don't know why the frame rate's so bad at the moment. This is disturbing. Recruit. It's good to see you're still in one piece. Apologies for the harsh welcome earlier. Communications cut off as soon as you engage those Xenon infrastructure units. And I cannot stand having no vision on my subordinates. There's no need for a detailed report. report. Yeah, you're not. My staff have already you're not buying this game for Baldur's Gate arrive. 3 level of NPCs. It is beyond dispute Let's just put it that, that way. What you have witnessed is of the utmost concern to the Protectorate, <coughs> but that is only half of the reason why I called you here personally. You have displayed unquestionable obedience and clarity of mind in the most stressful of situations, and distinguished yourself as a defender of Saul in even the darkest hours of our operation. I hereby raise you to the rank of special operative, and no, refusal is not an option. But I might deign to answer some of your questions, if you have any. No classified subjects, though. Uh, well, my analysts my are not entirely sure about the exact order of events. For that, we would have to interrogate Shinnaman himself, and he remains MIA. Judging by your report, it seems he may have been abducted. But I have a suspicion that there's more to it than that. I really should have read the signs beforehand. After all, Predicting the movements of ally and enemy alike is core to my job. There are no rats to talk for to on the space reason, station, sadly. For some reason, Shinnamon must have Hiss, tried desperately I say. to make a name for himself. Hiss. To be inquisitive and proactive in every situation. He also seems to have eerie intuition regarding the Xenon. I can only guess that something in his childhood, surrounded by stories about the glorious Terran War against the Machine Scourge, must have sparked his imagination trying to understand that which cannot be understood might have been his downfall so dramatic that was an unfortunate confrontation to say the least we came close to a debacle but i was ultimately able to smooth things over with the secretary of the antigone republic oh, that's good. when interacting with the rest of the gate network we will always attempt to show ourselves from our best angle but make no mistake, Earth will not allow herself to be abused or threatened ever again. I mean, that's, you know, not, a, not the worst thing. Well, I must say that I am hesitant to send you away again so soon. But since you're asking, 
there might indeed be something to help take your mind off these unfortunate events. That is, if you think you're ready. I see. No time to waste, right? Now, I would like to talk to you about the so-called uh, Project Genesis. Ah, uh, Project Genesis. That's the code name of a top secret operation that the Sagaris pioneers are cooking up. We certainly know more about it than they would like, but we remain in the dark when it comes to their ultimate goal. We do know that it involves a facility in their space with an unknown purpose. Fortunately for us, there seemed to have been an incident, and the station was evacuated until repairs could be carried out. This is a short-lived opportunity to gather intel. As such, we've taken action to inject false security documents into a pioneer database. Congratulations, operative. You're now a qualified pioneer engineer first class. You're set to join one of their engineering teams to repair that facility. During the operation, gather whatever information you can, but use your discretion. Just follow along with their instructions and you'll be fine. The team is gathering in Neptune. Yeah, so... That mission, if I, if I follow this at this point, I will end up teleported out of the solar system. Which I don't think I want to do at this point. So let's see what this mission is about. So I need to go talk to Karoy Singh. So let's go back to our ship. Come on, I'm stuck on the environment. Whoa. I wonder if there's too much crap going on in the system. That's why my frame rate's garbage. ship. So this guy right here, he's a Marine. If I Hello wanted there. to, for 13,000 credits, I could actually hire him and he would then work for me. So you can actually go around and collect NPCs to be on your crew. They will also always be able to tell you where to find certain things. Like if you wanted to find where the shipyard was or equipment dock. If you want to find the faction representatives. Sending you information now. The faction representatives are where you you buy blueprints for various things. So Yeah, so now I've got that guidance mission. But I don't actually need them. To to visit our <clears throat> We're going to talk to this guy. Khan. Yeah, Karu Singh, not Khan. This is the somewhat less violent relative of, of uh, Ricardo Montalban. Hopefully they this 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 particular uh, sing will not put heels into our ears. He put creatures into our bodies. Heading up the repair team. Be sure to stay on his good side. Yeah, I'm not going to Project Genesis yet. By the Auto way, pilot. sorry to disappoint Engaged. you. Engaged. Sorry to disappoint. What I do want to do is, in the asteroid belt, do a little bit of exploration and find some stations so that once I've got a miner, he'll be able to, to sell the stuff that he mines. Because <clears throat> if I don't know where a station is that'll buy ore or silicon or whatever, then auto mine won't work properly. I mean, it'll work properly, but there, there won't be anything to sell. Because you won't know where to sell it at. 
Yes, and I just ended a sentence with a preposition. So in case you couldn't tell, I am now at the point where I'm going to not Entering go so belt. hardcore on the guided aspect of this. And that's because I know better. I know that if I go to Project Dennis Genesis now and follow the steps, I will end up teleported away from the solar system relatively in the near future, and I'm not ready for that yet. And then, yeah, you can make your way back, but it's it's more it's it's easier if you look at like a star map on the Google, like on the other monitor, but it's it's a trip, and so we're not going to do that yet. And it's okay. So we're going to do two things. We're going to go into long range scan. Autopilot disengaged. So we want to find the other stations that are that are relatively close by, if there are other stations. Okay, so there's a station there. Good. We're going to deploy a satellite here. Stocking granted. Stocking permission. <coughs> yeah. And after we talk to this, after we talk to Khan, now it's Khan. I don't even care if it's Khan or not. Now we're, we're talking to Khan. Um, after we talk to Khan, we're going to go see what's up with that other station and do some more pinging around the asteroid belt. Kind of map it out a little bit. Now, some things in the universe are going to be random. Like some of the some of the stations and the trade goods and stuff. It's not always going to be the exact same thing in each start. So there is a certain amount Successfully of... Docked. you got to discover what each... What it's each an honor to have you aboard. ...instance of your universe has in store for you. Oh, they're honored to have me aboard. Well, the Terran Protector does like me at this point, so there is that. Xenon War Room. No fighting in the War Room! Hey, Uncanny Valley person. Pilot? Always good to see a new recruit. I am in charge of coordinating the Terran Protectorate's response to the Xenon threat. My priorities are twofold. To keep the soul system safe from all harm and to direct the intervention core towards the enemy holed up in the furthest reaches uh -huh. of the universe. Oh. The military would not have approached you if you weren't a friend of the Protectorate. Xenon forces are vast, so we are always in need of manpower. Since it is our mission to seek out all Xenon strongholds, our military campaigns regularly push into hostile territory far away from any possible support. Because of this, we can only recruit the most capable pilots. You will have to submit to a test. Your race and former affiliations do not matter as long as you swear allegiance I help, to our cause. I like, drive off this giant invasion. You will be granted the choice of many tasks, from combat deployments to construction work. What is available will depend on the current situation in the area. You will be paid as you complete your allotted tasks, and we may see fit to reward you further at the conclusion. Excellent. You will now find tasks related to our ongoing campaign against the Xenon in your mission. Okay, interface. so this is... The game has the concept of doing missions for various groups or guilds, and apparently I now... I now uh, can do them Terran versus Xenon. And all of these are, are hard! Oh, great. <coughs> great. Yeah. Yeah, none of these are going to be easy. 
so we're just gonna we're gonna do a little bit of a pass on these missions right now. Oh, let me see something here. Um, there was a little icon that basically says, "Hey, there's missions here." But I think maybe it was the one here. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's do this. Let's let's go back to my ship. To go check out that station. Yeah, climbing ladders is hard. Hey, you know what? I got it. Hello. Yep. Hi. You go sit. In the, you go hang out in the back. There's apparently like crew quarters and stuff. They can go hang out. So now we're going to go over here. Autopilot <clears throat> engaged. stuff here to mine, so that's good. Okay. What's this guy gonna buy? So he buys helium. So that tells me something. And is there he oh and there is helium in the sector. So I Auto think pilot. we found our Disengage. first little economic inspiration here. If we get a gas miner, that gas miner will be able to sell helium to the space station. So, let's do this. Let's price that out. Let's spec it out. So, we'll go to the wharf. We need to clear so that we... And we're going to go buy ships. So, again, I don't think I can afford a medium, so we'll start small. Uh, oh no, what about medium? Oh no, the gas miners are much more expensive. There's no small gas miners. All right, let's see what we got. We'll do a bare bones, we'll do a bare bones one. Captain and service crew. You do need to do a crew though. So we'll save cheap gas. So four hundred and ninety-two thousand. Ugh. All right, but it's a medium, which means it can hold a lot. <coughs> now you insert. Now you insert the meme where the guy's banging on the side of it. Yeah, this this bad boy can hold so much gas. All right. Oh, my ship is terrible. By the way, my ship needs some work. Hello so there. Let me fix it. Yeah, you just you take over. Whenever you get up, your pilot comes and offers to steer the ship. Let's fix it. Is 
because I did take some damage when I was in that fur ball with the Xenon. And I sh you should always, when possible, you should be flying around with full shield and hull. Don't give the game any, any chance to kill you. Well, the funny thing is, is if the ship you're on is destroyed, you won't actually instantly die. You'll be ejected in space in your spacesuit. And if you have another ship that can come pick you up, great. If you don't, and you're not in range to, like, spacewalk to a station or something... Yeah, you've got until your oxygen, oxygen runs out, and then you die. And sometimes you're in hazardous space, and you die... Docking granted. ...immediately, or, like, your ship gets blown up by a minefield, and then you... I have a cat that does that whenever I get up from my chair. Yeah, that is a very cat-like thing, isn't it? Oh, my. So we need to, we need to make a little bit of money. Ah, uh, so we can do a couple of things. We can do a couple of things. What can we do? I think... We're going to want to... It would be great if we could find some data vaults or things like that. But I think what we're going to start by doing is guidance to this object... In fact, we're going to go property owned. Uh, agree. having a hard time making him do something. I'm just like, I'll just fly the damn ship. <sighs> I do like letting the NPCs drive. That's one of my favorite things because I'm lazy. But in this case, I'm driving. I'm not broke, but I don't quite have enough money to get the miner going yet. And I'm debating how much I want to cheese. I kind of want to... I kind of want to establish myself a little bit more in Seoul before going to other areas of the game. So we'll see. We're also going to, once I get close to this accelerator, I'll, ju I'll drop out of autopilot, set up another long range scan. Maybe there's some stations around here that'll buy a work because the gas miner is expensive. Oh, that would make me, that would make me some nice scratch. It's very safe around here. There's not a whole lot of shenanigans that the ships have to deal with. Excuse me. Right. Auto Got pilot. Disengage. Long range scan. Do a ping. Boink. Got anything? I see nothing. A lot of asteroids, but no stations. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm not. 
in the same so I'm doing this specifically as a as a let's play on the Terran start to kind of show some of my friends um, one of the more guided starts I've got a uh, Sejaris Pioneer, Pioneer one where I've started to build up my economy a bit and I've got a couple of stations going now but I'm nowhere near 50 billion credits entering Mars my fate my best ship so far is a Xeon with the turrets and the and the essentially it's not a rail gun but it's like a, a, an energy version of the rail gun reminds me of the Rossi from the expanse and I like standing on the bridge of that and then the xenon get close and the bolt turrets just light everything up it's it's pretty spectacular I think this game the game is a slow burn for sure like I could see I could see someone who's not patient like not getting into it and it took me a while to get into it I've owned it for a couple of years now and I'm not sure why I picked it up again I think a YouTube video landed in my feed and reminded me that I own the game and it was one of these guys who was like super into it I'm like huh oh you can do that oh you can do that and then that got me sucked in Now, I'll admit I'm one of those people who actually enjoys Starfield, but this game scratches some of the itches that Starfield does not, which is why it's nice to play more than one game. This is more of your, let's call it your hardcore space simulation. Things like that, as opposed to Fallout in space. Building stations on contracts for money. That could be cool. Yeah, I'm not I you're inspiring me a little bit here. I gotta try I gotta try some of those moves. Yeah, alright, so this is just an MRE factory. Drop a satellite so that I've got some visibility on it, but I don't think it's going to be a part of my economic infrastructure at all at this point. All right, so let's do this. I know nothing about Venus, so we're gonna we're just gonna start guidance to an empty spot. Venus will autopilot in. We'll scan and we'll see what's up. And right now. You know, I'm not earning anything. Like, if I were in my other game, I'd be getting alerts. Hey, you just got paid. You just got paid. You just got paid. So, technically speaking, I'm sort of wasting time right now. I'm, I'm exploring and gathering intel. Figuring out what the system looks like. But yeah, I'm not actually making Most of my most of my money in my in my other save started as mining money, and I've slowly turned it into self-supplied manufacturing. Money. Entering Venus. Okay. So it's a medical supply factory. We're gonna fly to the middle of the sector, see what else we run into, and then do a scan, look for stations. See if we got any mission offers. Oh, a medium. Oh, look at that. Mining survey. Yeah. Oh, and now we got a new story mission. Again, this is gonna be this is gonna be some of the some of the stuff you can do in the DLCs and things like that. 
for all we know, the ship could be track the ship and see where it goes. Uh, could make it easy 49k. We'll accept that guy I as well. I knew I could count on you. So we got a couple of missions, but let's do let's do this mining survey first and see what's what. Autopilot. Meanwhile, but let's That's an interesting quest line, but I'm not doing that right now. Alright, bunch of stations. <coughs> now, I don't know an object is probably a jump gate of some sort. Either a jump gate or an accelerator. So, we're gonna go set guy to there. Mars. Autopilot. Engage. Yeah, it's an accelerator. We can see it on the screen. Even though it's a question mark, that's an accelerator. So that probably... I don't know if that one would go to Earth, which I don't think I'm allowed to go to yet. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. A hundred miners. Yeah, I guess you get to a point where you can almost say, hey, I won. To approaching vessel. You are approaching a restricted area. Please divert your course immediately. Oh yeah, it doesn't want me to go through that jump gate. Autopilot disengaged. They do not want me to go through that jump gate. Alright, so what mission am I tracking at this point? Mining survey, okay, we're, we're gonna do that. Autopilot. <clears throat> Diverting engaged. course. And then we'll figure out what we need to do there. I have resource probes if that's what I need for this. <clears throat> and that'll get me a little bit on the way to, to the money I need for that miner. Oh, the Ka'ak? <clears throat> the Ka'ak, I think, are those purple... Those purple ships. They're the insectoids that are angry at everybody. I don't know if they're angry at the Xenon, but... Oh, damn. Okay, so that's basically warning me that I can't go to the moon or to Earth yet. Entering Mars. That's the alliance of the word. To meet the Borons. Alright. We're not going to do that yet. Alright, so you need to scan a ship containing ore. What does that mean, scan a ship containing Scan any random ship containing ore. Autopilot disengage. <sighs> Baldrick. 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 Those are agricultural traders. Uh, okay. So, what am I? I'm looking for a ship containing ore. Oh, I failed to stop the ship on time. Looks like I failed a mission. That's a damn shame. Oh, the dogs are going crazy. Okinawa. What am I doing? Do they contain ore or not? I'm not going to catch. 
catch up to them with that rocket. I don't know what I need to do for this damn mission. So I basically just need to find a ship in Mars that's containing that contains ore. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to like look based on the name of the ships. But I'll bet Alright, let's do this. Let's go to that spot. Autopilot engaged. And maybe if I'm just close enough to that spot in the station. I'll pick up some scans automatically. <clears throat> Metallic. Yeah, I could look for that, but I haven't found that factory in Mars yet, or a factory like that in Mars yet. Probably should probably scan a little bit more. Let's get to the base and see what I can find there with the scanners on. And then we'll take it from there. I'll do a long range scan, see if Do a scan once I get here and see what we can find. <coughs> Obviously, again, I gotta be in Mars for the scan to be valid for this mission. Autopilot. And it's disengaged. Not clear if I actually have to select the thing. Oh. I found it. I think. My shield. I hit the wrong trigger. Sorry. Baldrick. 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 That's not what I meant to do. That was a little embarrassing. Alright, so haven't found a ship containing ore yet. How close do I need to be here for the scanner to actually work? running away because he's like I want nothing to do with this crazy shooting guy. Recall. I wonder if there's any does Mars have any minerals? Let's take a look. If I open the encyclopedia entry what resources does it say us? Sunlight. And I'm not coming up with... I mean, that was a good suggestion on the factories, but I'm not seeing any that are pinging on my scanner. So the only other thing, I'm going to go north here and do a, do a long-range scan Auto there and see what I come up engaged. with. Maybe I'm missing a station that would be handy. And at some point, I'm just not going to bother with this stupid mission. What is this? 
preventative measures. Oh. Well, that could be fun. Auto timer. Disengage. Yes, I just have to Auto shoot some criminals down. Engaged. That I can do. That I can do easily. Of course, I could just bust my way out of the soul system and probably find some money that way. What I should really do, well, I should do a few things. So let me try this mission first and see what I can get. But I should, I'm probably going to start work my way, I'm going to start to work my way out towards Neptune. And then jump into Sagaris Punger territory because there might be... A little more excitement there. Like if I got, if I could find a data vault, that would be really Auto fantastic. Because those Disengage. sometimes are a quick cash infusion. All right. So now we'll circle around looking for criminals. Usually they're going to be by docking bays. And what the hell? We'll turn on turn on scan mode because maybe I'll pick up something carrying ore. Oh, come on, game. What's this? Is that the accelerator? Yeah, it's an accelerator. It's not a ship. What's this guy? Baldrake. Oh, he's an agricultural trader. So he's probably not going to have war. Good for you, agricultural trader. I'm not planning on it. Short range transporter. Oh god, my FPS is like dying. Don't let them get away. We all of a sudden Short have a range bunch of transporter. Criminals. go quick 48k a little bit of Terran faction yay I am a hero for shooting up little things that can't shoot back Sometimes they drop cargo, which can be lucrative. Lucrative is a fun word, but I'm not seeing any. Where am I? Oh, that's one of my own satellites. Okay. All right. Uh, what was I going to do? Let's hit long range scan mode again. Also, I'm looking Thank for. You. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little more money, I'll take it. I will take it. How much did I decide I needed for the gas miner? Or the uh, mineral miner? Let's take a look. 
buy ships, small, mineral, and then crude with drill, 300k. And I've got 270k. So, alright. I'm getting there. Let me see if there's any other mission offers where maybe I can do a little bit of bitch work and um, what do we have here? Booby trapping, Xeno. That doesn't sound like something I can do yet. <coughs> and I'm not flying into Xenon space and dropping satellites. That sounds like that could get really, really bad and ugly quickly. Not doing that. I think what I'm going to do is this. We're going to head to the Terran equipment dock. In fact, yeah, let me get out. Yeah, you take over. there. We're not necessarily in a dock, but once we get there, we'll do some scanning. And we're just, we're just going to watch space go by. Keep an eye on some mission offers here. Yeah, the medium, uh, a single seat fighter, none of this shit I'm going to be able to do. The jump gate investigation won't pay out anything immediately. All I need is 30k. But if I can find the right... Actually, you know what? I'll bet I have enough in my in my inventory to sell. Yeah, I mean, some of it's illegal. But I have enough. If I, if I just go to Jupiter and sell the legal stuff, I should be able to buy the mineral mine and get my money flowing. All right, well, let's get to Jupiter and see what happens. <clears throat> we'll get some satellites on there. In fact, what we'll do... Actually, tell you to dock. Because I actually want to talk to the trader on there now and sell my shit. Hey! Did you catch the announcement of the new DLC coming in the spring? Having not really played the earlier games, that sounds kind of interesting. Entering Asteroid Belt. Because they're going to have missions based on some of the historical things that have happened in the universe. <sighs> yeah, timelines. Yeah, I don't I don't have any experience with the other games. I own X3, the Terran the Terran one, but I've not really done anything with it. <coughs> uh, the other games I I haven't even touched. Oh gotcha. X2 the threat. What I really should do is I should get myself to a history page about the series and read up on the lore because some of it is very vague to me and while you do have um, where's this encyclopedia there is a timeline like but you gotta you gotta unlock the various things the and as you can gate, see I've done a pathetic job of that down. After 20 years of instability, during which time more and more systems disconnected, 
The jump gate network shut down completely. Ding. Yeah. I have unlocked the headquarters in my other save. I'm intentionally slow playing getting to that point in this playthrough because I don't want to be... Oh, that's good to know. Thank you for that tip. I, I don't want to be thrown into Commonwealth space yet. Entering I want to kind Jupiter. of get established in Terran space first. Well, the Terran space is being really freaking quiet. I also, in, in in a save I no longer have, like when I, because I had to rebuild my gaming computer, and then I, the save I ended up with mods in it that I decided I no, I'm, I, I'm not going to use these anymore. I ended up like running into like the Tides of Avarice with you know that that seems like an interesting mechanic, some other stuff like that. So there's 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 a lot I have yet to do in this in this game. A lot I have yet to do. What's nice about the game is... Yeah, the economy... You mean the economies are... So, I understand that the Terran economy and the Commonwealth economy absolutely are different. And in fact, that was a little bit of a struggle until I was able to buy some universal blueprints. Because building Terran energy cells in Commonwealth space is a pain in the ass. Although I, I'm sure you know that. Um, obviously, you get to the point... You get to the point where once you have enough money, it doesn't matter as much, because you can just buy the shit you need to, to, to have access to all the blueprints. But, you know, I, I tend to have maybe four to five million cash on hand right now and then I do something with it I'm not at the point where I'm sitting on a hundred million credits or, or you know a vast amount of money yeah scrap processing I gotta I gotta look into that that seemed there there's so much to chew on in this in this game It, it sort of reminds me, another game I've played it, that's in a similar swim lane is Dwarf Fortress, where you can get crazy or you can keep things relatively simple and straightforward. But similar idea, very sandboxy, kind of, you know, fo you can focus on the things you like, and if you want to get really elaborate and automate it and, and, and make a ton of money, you can. Or you can just be like, some simple goals. Alright. Thank you, Captain Calvin. I shall be back. Keep the ship warm. So my only concern is will there be a place where a mineral miner can sell them? I haven't seen anybody buying ore yet. Hello, can I help? Hi. Here you go. So, I'm gonna sell a bunch of shit. Because I want the monies. Uh... So that'll have me, that'll get me over what I need to buy good luck the mineral there. miner. So that's good. The only question becomes, is, is there any place that's buying ore? So let's do this. We'll go search for ore. So, oh, actually... This place is buying ore. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so my 
my mineral miner will have a customer. Outstanding. Outstanding. Because I thought I didn't see a place that was buying ore before, so I thought I'd have to go right to methane. Uh, but no, I can do that. So. Let's go to the wharf. And we'll go buy ships. Small. Miner. Crude with drill. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have enough money yet. Damn it! Do I need the mining drill? I think I only need the mining drill if I'm going to do the mining. Otherwise, it could be naked. It doesn't need that. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to build it. We're going to build it without the drill. Just because I want to get the mining going. So add it to the shopping list. Confirm the order. All right. And there she is being built. So now what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename her. So we're going to call her Belta Prime. A little bit of an expanse call out. And then we're going to give her orders. So we'll go into the information. We'll go into behavior. Default behavior is going to be auto mine. Local auto mine. Where the hell is it right we're going to do it with ore. We're going to anch the anchor space will be the asteroid belt. Confirm. Then we'll. Can I help? Yeah. Let's see. Can I? Oh, geez. Do you not even know how to pilot? What's his, what's his status? Oh. He's pretty fucking terrible. Um. Alright, so he's barely... Alright. He's a noob. So, he's not going to be the best pilot ever. But he'll get better over time. And... As I find piloting seminars, I can train it. But the, I think the take-home message is I now will have my passive economy going. Let's see, what are my messages that I haven't read? Or was those two inactive missions? Ukraine. Yeah, let me take the ship. Hello there. Now oh, that ship's having a hard time bouncing around on the station. Yeah, sometimes the AI gets a little derpy. I should probably get myself some new satellites. Ah. Sometimes the controller, uh, I end up. 
Engaged. We'll drop a satellite in between these stations. And I'm actually probably about the point now that I got now that I got the belter hired. Let's, let's take a look at it. There he is. He's flying to go mine some more. Have I saved recently? Gee, those, those are the types of questions that are great to ask. No. <laughs> but I'm 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 saving right meow. The game will auto save. I think the default is every forty minutes or so. Uh but yeah, I sometimes am bad about manually saving. Oh, and that's my last Auto satellite. Pilot. Disengaged. Okay. So that's unfortunate. Uh, Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. Since I'm lazy, I'm going to get up. Yeah, you take control. And then... Oh, a carbide mill. Oh, see, this guy will buy methane. So once I have enough money for the gas miner, we now have a we have a customer here too. All right, fantastic. We're going to go to the equipment dock and we're going to repair and upgrade there. No, not Belta. Oh, come on. Give me give me control here. I want the Kukri to go there. Here we go. I need more consumables. I need more satellites. How much money do I have? I don't have enough money for that many satellites. I've only got 26k. Uh, I think I can buy five. Yeah. So my, my Uber driver will take me there. We'll buy five satellites. Yeah. Saving games is like devoting early and often. Yeah. The problem with saving is even though I've got an NVMe drive, saving and loading this is, is like not that quick. <laughs> so that's sometimes annoying. Not that I, not that I disagree with your fundamental point there. But, yeah, it is sometimes annoying. All right, so this mining survey thing is annoying me. I'm aborting that. And maintenance duty is the story. Uh, mediums, eye for an eye. What is this? Destroy criminal traffic. We're going to accept Monday, that. Count on you. I like the destroying criminal traffic things. Because they're very simple. You're in serious trouble. Come on. Should I be scared? Dock the ship. Dock the ship, get the satellites. Do the stuff. Do the stuff. So he's going to dock. It'll do the thing. Meanwhile, how's our belter doing? So he doesn't have any cargo yet. But he is 
dorking around auto mining. So that's good. Is that his icon saying what he's doing? Yeah, I think so. But he'll eventually he'll eventually find some rocks, start mining them, and then selling them uh, to places. And what he's probably doing is he's probably going to move into range of my resource probe because you can more efficiently mine there when you're within range of a resource probe. And that's one of the reasons I dropped it. So please do that. How are we doing here? Hello there. Yeah. General Kenobi. Uh, Alright, and we are all restocked on satellites. So that's good. Alright. So what I'm going to do at this point, I need to probably stop for now. But I'm in a very good place in terms of having done the start. We're going to do a brand new save into an empty slot. Uh, and now I can either continue to push a little bit of story or what I'm probably going to do, like I said, is explore the Terran system a little more, establish my intelligence network with my satellites so I know what the economy's at, build up some passive income, with the miners and then take it from there. But if you're interested in a quiet, peaceful start, Terran Cadet's probably your, your, your best option because you're not thrown into the middle of too much craziness immediately. Anyway, that's all for now. Later!